communication, the exchange of ideas between men, the nerve network around which civilization is built. Lines of communication within industry must be of highest efficiency. And in terms of transmitting everyday business orders, industry has perfected its techniques. When a sudden change comes, converting an ordinary work order into a rush, the sales manager picks up his phone and relays the news to the plant manager. It may be a nuisance, but he knows what he has to do. He calls the plant superintendent, whose job in turn will be to summon the foreman directly concerned with the project. Then, the foreman and the plant superintendent go over the production schedule, making changes which will give momentum to the work order. This change affects the work of 20 men and speeds up an order, the cost of which runs to $50,000. A production change passed along the entire chain of command in minutes. Perfect communication, perfect understanding. But communication not directly related to production is not always so quick, and it's often far from perfect. For example, when Peerless Products decides that an increase in business makes possible the opening of an entirely new manufacturing department, the president wants to announce the good news at his own convenience. However, one thing he's overlooked the grapevine. Charlie, the sweeper, is a man who gets around, a man who keeps his ears open and his mouth. No kidding. I seen him. Right in old shop 47. He did? Mm-hmm. Eight automatics. And each one will do the work of six hand screw operators. <laughs> you guys better start looking for new jobs. <laughs> oh, come out, Charlie. We don't believe all that kind of stuff. You wait, you'll see. You all be out of work. Harry takes Charlie's gossip with a grain of salt. And so does everybody else. A rumor is only a rumor. Still, something like that did happen over at Cameo last year. Then Harry's brother-in-law his 25 years of seniority goodbye, including pension rights. So Harry, and quite a few men like him, have a hard time keeping their minds on their work the rest of the day. Maybe he should ask his foreman, but the foreman is busy. Besides, he's always the last one to know anything. On his way home that night, Harry tries not to worry. A rumor is only a rumor, but even a rumor is communication, and bad news has a way of spreading fast. Seems that Harry's plant is about to let some men go. The big boss was in, looking worried. That rumor about the layoff must be true. Harry is unable to laugh it off now, and by dinner time, even Harry has turned the rumor into truth. He was only thinking it might be fun to quit this job and start all over again in a healthier climate. Harry wasn't the only one who spent a worried night. Next morning, a group of workers examine the new machinery and decide to send a delegation to the plant manager to get some information. The plant manager has an uncomfortable few minutes till he has a chance to explain. When the men have gone, he calls the company president and tells him what happened. What? You mean that damn grapevine again? Oh, all right, all right. Come on up and we'll prepare an announcement. Yes, and uh, we're going to hire more people, Morgan. And while we're about it, we'd better prepare an announcement for the papers tomorrow, too. Yes, we don't want the town getting any wrong ideas. Yeah. No, 
People don't like little surprises of this kind. Ill feeling on the part of his workers. Rumor among the townspeople. Slowdowns in production. And it could have been handled so easily. Your attention, please. This is Jerry Bradley speaking. There will be more details on your bulletin board tomorrow and the full story in our magazine next week. But we wanted you to get the good news right away. The new Jackson Brothers long-term contract means it is now time to launch a program we've been planning for a long time, the opening of a new manufacturing department. We want you to know that we worked hard to get this contract, but that it is you who make our products superior to our competitors that made it possible. So thank you and keep up the good work. Rumors are stilled by facts. And at the same time, the opportunity to compliment the workers and strengthen their company pride is used to good advantage. Ways of communicating accurately within a plant or factory are limited only by monetary factors and the imaginations of management and the personnel director. Communication is the spreading of ideas. Even a bulletin board is better than nothing at all. It can be at least informative, accurate, and to the point. But there are countless media in use by alert companies, such as this company report with statistics changed monthly information racks are popular, located near a time clock or exit, and stocked with pamphlets that contain, besides company news, recipes or household hints that make them of interest to the entire family. A more direct contact between management and workers is achieved when executives address their employees in regularly scheduled meetings, either formally, during working hours, or after hours at an open house to which the entire family is welcomed. A well-informed supervisor or foreman instills confidence, encouraging his workers to discuss their problems with him. And when a communication program is effective, the foreman need never be embarrassed, lacking information. He knows he can always go back upstairs to get the reasons why for his men. Courses given in fundamental economics may help explain why certain jobs get paid what they do, or why raises may not be possible at certain times. That reasons, not arbitrary rules from a man with his feet on the desk, determine costs, profits, and wages. That men are related to departments, plants to industries, nations to a world of nations. And through planned communications programs, workers can be shown how much machinery costs, its place in the chain of production, and consequently, their own important place in this process. Excellent as a morale builder is a well-run suggestion system, kept up to date to give it meaning. It provides an encouraging means for every employee to get his ideas before top management. And good executives know that to create two-way communications themselves, they must set the example by their willingness to receive new ideas as well as to spread them. In industry, good communications always run from top to bottom and from bottom to top as well. A good communication program helps to give workers a sense of belonging to their company. Through effective communication, ignorance, rumor, hostility can be supplanted by understanding and cooperation. Then men like Harry can talk things over with their foreman or supervisors instead of with Charlie the sweeper. And he can answer idle gossipers with facts. Oh, Frank, you got that all wrong. 
fact is, they're finding a new production department over at the factory. What for? Why, we did 13% more businesses here than we did last year. Well, that sounds good. More than that, they're going to hire 800 new employees between now and next October. 800? Wow, did you hear that, Ed? Carrie's a happy man now. He's a happy part of his family, an effective part of his factory. And through a sound company communications program, a well-informed, constructive part of the community as a whole.